you know what, let's address this question once and for all. What's the deal with parallel compression? Is it a magic trick that helps you polish your mix and helps it stand out or is it really worth it? Let's find out. Hey peeps, this is Bhuvan from Suntide and welcome back to my channel. Here you'll find videos and tutorials on music production, sound and bass design, drum programming and occasional gear reviews so that you can also grow in your musical journey. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, it goes a long way. In this video, let's discuss what is parallel compression, how to use it, when to use it and does it really make sense in your mix? So let's find out. All right, peeps, so here we are back in Logic and I'm picking up from where I left off in my previous video where I was explaining about chord progressions, inversions, suspended chords and harmony chords. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave the link on the iCard and down in the description box below as well. So here, let's understand what is parallel compression first. So a parallel compression is a technique where you send a copy of the tri signal to a bus, you compress that copy to oblivion and then you blend in that wet signal along with the dry signal so that you retain the dry transients and the dry information, but you have the compressed vocal so, so that the character kind of comes in the mix. So to answer the question whether it's worth it or not, stick around till the end of this video because you're the better judge. Your ears are the best judge out there. So hear it yourself. We'll try experimenting with different ways and then you decide whether it's worth it for you or your style of music or what all instruments you should use in and what all instruments you can totally omit. So how do we use the parallel compression? So in this case, I have a piano chord progression, which is in the key of C and I'm going to be sending a copy of the try the main piano signal to a bus. So in this case, I'll go to a bus and then I'll just rename this and then I'll just bring this to zero dB. And there we have a copy of signal which is sending to a parallel compression bus. The next step is to add the compressor on the bus channel, which is the copy of the instrument channel, not on the main channel. So we'll use the stock plugin inside of Logic and I'll go to Vintage FET and I'll keep it there. The next step is to compress the copy of the signal to Oblivion. So I'm talking about aggressive compression. So let's do that let's bring out uh, let's do 8 is to 1 and bring out let's say 10 dbs let's do 15 dbs softer knee faster attack softer release great the fourth step is to blend in the compressed signal against the dry signal so that we have a much more richer and polished sounding piano. So by itself, the dry piano sounds like this. Now let's blend in. So as you can notice, when the dry signal is playing, the transients are very dull, it's not punchy and the sustain kind of dies out very fast. But when you're blending the parallel compressed signal, the copy of the signal, it kind of has a much more punchy transient and also the sustain calls are ringing till the second call. So it's kind of like not dying out in between. Let's hear it once again. Only the dry, wet, so it makes a world of a difference. Great, it's already sounding nice, but there's one more aspect and there's one mistake that everybody does. Notice that the signal, the dry signal, 
is kind of going post fader or the post pan. As you can see, the bus is set to post pan or the post fader. So it's basically post pan and post fader is the same. And what is the difference? Okay, let me just do that once so that you can see. If I change the volume of the dry, it affects the volume for the wet signal as well. So a no signal is going. So changing the volume of the try signal will affect the copy of the signal. And we don't want that. And the reason for that is that let's say we use parallel compression on vocals. And we know that when we are kind of doing volume automation, we go into minutest of the details and change some phrases above. We kind of automate the phrases down and it kind of affects the wet signal as well. So the point of putting a compressor on the copy of the signal, which is already kind of automating in itself, does not solve the purpose. So, I mean, it's not a true represent of the transients of the dry signal. It's the affected transients, which is feeding into the compressor. So how do we fix this? We go to the bus and we select as pre-fader. So in this case, no matter what volume I change, it doesn't affect the wet signal. So as you can see, the direct signal is kind of going as a copy to the bus and that is getting compressed. So no matter how much I automate the volume of the try, it does not affect the wet. So in this case, you have a much more polished and true representation of the compressed signal rather than having a post fader or a post pan signal, which is then getting affected by the compressor. Now I understand the difference is pretty subtle and you might still be confused whether it's worth it or not. So let me do this. Let me AB the compressor by putting the compressor directly on the dry signal with the same settings and then do an AB with a parallel compression and you be the judge for yourself. And I'll give my viewpoint after it. So let me bring the compressor here, mute the bus channel and let's hear it. So as you can hear, all of the dry signal, the true raw signal of the piano is getting lost because we have compressed significantly and all of the transients are getting lost and we are not able to hear the sustained chords as well. Now let's bring the compressor to the parallel compression bus and unmute this and hear it again. of a difference. You have the dry signal intact that's not getting altered. The dry signal is kind of going directly into the bus to the compressor so it's not getting affected by the fader because it's set to pre-fader and you have a balanced dry and wet signal which has a much more punchy transient and a mellow sustained chords across the chord progression and that is the beauty of using parallel compression. In my opinion, it's totally worth it. I use it all the time in all of my instruments and vocals. Uh, you can also skip it in basses or some synths if you don't want that. But using parallel compression in pianos, in vocals, in drums for that matter, like kick, snares or hats, you will get amazing results. And trust me, you have a much more blended overall mix and an amazing sounding track. So go ahead and try it out and let me know if it works for you as well. Okay, okay, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you did. It's always good to hear your thoughts and also read your comments. I replied to each and every comments out there. And if you have any other tricks apart from what we discussed today, let me know and I'll be happy to check them out. As always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here and want to see much more videos like this, support the channel by subscribing and hit that bell so that you can stay updated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, cheers.